Hello students, welcome to lecture 30 of the online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. Today's lecture will be on application of matter surfaces and uh, GMR devices. So here is the lecture outline. First we will see some of the matter surface based devices such as matter surface based lens and sensor. We will go into the details of how these things are designed. And then we will look into some of the applications of GMR based devices that is guided mode resonance based devices. We will discuss about some band pass filters as well as GMR based sensors. So matter surface I hope uh, you all remember from the previous lectures that matter surface gives you the control on the amplitude, phase, polarization also on the frequency of the incident light you can modify those using uh, matter surface. So, the modification can be seen either on the reflected wave or the transmitted wave. You can also see some other applications something like OAM that is orbital angular momentum. Okay, uh, We can have diffraction order, space dispersion and all these things. They also have application in wavefront engineering. These are called basically wavefront engineering holography, advanced manufacturing and intelligent surfaces. So, we will come into each of this uh, briefly. So, first let us focus on wavefront in, in engineering and we understood that matter surface can serve as promising platforms for high performance optical uh, elements such as metal lens, then structural light generators, polarizers, wave plates, optical isolators and so on. So, this is these are the applications of wavefront engineering. You can also use matter surface um, for holography because they can act as excellent holographic uh, recording medium and this is because of their large information capacity and sub wavelength wavelengths units basically. You can take help of intelligent algorithm. And um, in that case, matter surface can significantly simplify the design, assembly and operation of optical systems. You can also take help of inverse design algorithms to design matter surfaces for a particular uh, application. So, here in inverse design means you know the desired response and you ask the software to optimize uh, the parameter space and give you the design which will be closely matching to the desired optical response. With the support of advanced uh, fabrication, uh, matter surfaces with larger diameters and more complex structures can be you know made and that will allow you to achieve better performance and also complex functionalities. And the other important thing is that with the excellent properties of matter surfaces, you can also develop you know advanced fabrication technologies such as nano imprint lithography and uh, resonant laser printing. So, matter surface can also help improving the standard uh, fabrication technologies. So, these are also some applications that we can foresee. You can think of intelligent optical chip based on matter surfaces, multifunctional camera, light field imaging, um, you have holographic multiplexing, optical calculators and so on. So, all these things are possible using matter surfaces. Now, let us take one particular example of uh, a lens design based on matter surface. So, here we are going to design a matter surface based broadband uh, flat lens array. So, this is the unit cell design to start with. So, it is basically a C shaped split ring resonator as you can see and this is the this dashed line is basically the symmetry axis and you can see the symmetry axis uh, makes 45 degree angle with x axis ok. And why do we choose this? I will come to that. Um, the schematic of this uh, C shaped SRR where the parameters are basically uh, this. So, the radius the outer radius of the ring is 35 micron alpha is this opening. Uh, you can see there is a cut. So, this cut opening makes an angle of 10.5 degree. Okay, Here it is definitely more, but this is just a schematic. Okay, 
So, and then you have uh, W that is the width of this ring to be 5 micron. Now, how it works? So, we position the symmetry axis uh, as plus minus 45 degree with respect to x axis and then this SRR are basically made of 20 sorry 200 nanometer thick aluminum okay which has got a conductivity of 3.72 10 to the power 7 Siemens per meter and you can pattern this on top of a silicon substrate which has got a permittivity of 11.7 okay so you can consider epsilon sil silicon as 11.7 now what is the good thing about this you can see here Okay, so you have taken different different shapes of this unit cell and you can actually calculate the amplitude transmittance through a infinite array of this kind of uh, unit cells when repeated periodically in both dimensions and also you calculate the phase shift that is plotted here in this particular right axis. Okay, and these are all done for um, the case where your incident light is expolarized and you have chosen the frequency to be 0 0.8 terahertz okay and these are the eight different unit um, cell designs of the split ring resonator as you can see and the output light is basically uh, y polarized so here you can see this is x and y so this is the detected light that is y polarized and the incident light is x polarized okay so here you see that the four the first four if you look into the first four designs they have uh, slightly different split ring okay so somewhere the opening angle is changing somewhere the position is changing and so on okay so here it is basically the opening is getting bigger and bigger okay so that actually helped us to do one thing so you have actually calculated the transmittance in these four cases and you can see they are more or less you know equal transmission amplitude however the phase if you see the first one has got a phase of 0 degree then 45 degree then you know 90 degree and another 45 degree so it's 135 degree and so on so these are allowing you to add you know a phase difference of pi by 4 pi by 4 pi by 4 and so on so this opening is allow you to add the phase okay now the phase shift of the outgoing y polarized light can also change by pi when the resonator is uh, mirrored by 45 degree okay or oh, sorry the resonator is mirrored along the x axis okay while keeping the transmission amplitude invariant so that is how you actually got these additional four uh, resonators so if you take a you know mirror of this particular design with respect to x axis you come up with this one so this will give a pi phase shift as uh, corresponding to this one so this was zero so this guy has got a phase shift of pi okay similarly the one this design had a uh, phase shift of uh, it is actually uh, 135 degree so you can actually see what it will be so 135 plus uh, pi so that will be the phase here so you can actually go up to so you can start from here so you can say this is pi and then you can go up to 2 pi okay so that way um, you are able to get you know starting from 0 to 2 pi all the phase uh, you can actually see you are able to achieve for all these different uh, designs of the unit cell and you are keeping the amplitude more or less constant amplitude of the transmission so this is the beauty of this particular uh, design now if you do the uh, similar kind of thing okay for uh, say the opposite orientation that means if you consider um, incident light to be y polarized you will get similar results uh, for transmitted or detect um, yeah transmitted wave um, which will be um, in that case x polarized okay the so same thing can be repeated once you exchange the polarization so it will work perfectly fine in that case you have to also take the mirror uh, across the y axis okay so this is how the different designs of the unit cell allows you to uh, achieve more or less similar transmission but you are able to 
manipulate phase at particular uh, interval. Now, with that you can design a flat matter surface lens. So, this, uh, this one the uh, slab that you see here is basically that particular uh, matter surface lens which is a flat lens. And when you are designing this flat lens using those uh, splitting resonators we have just seen, you are able to achieve a hyperboloidal uh, phase profile like this. Okay? And this will allow you to uh, engineer the transmitted uh, wavefront okay, in such a way as if it is coming from a conventional lens. And that is how a flat matter surface will also be able to focus light from here to this particular point. So, this is what you know matter surface will be able to achieve. Now, here we have assumed that the plane wave travels along z direction and it will come to the matter surface like this. From the matter surface it will get uh, focused at a particular focal point f and small f is the distance focal length. And here you see the blue sphere surface is basically the equiphase surface. Okay. Now, according to Farnett's principle, the hyperboloidal phase profile can be expressed using this formula, where phi r and phi 0 basically uh, represent the abrupt phase shift at an arbitrary point r. So, this is any arbitrary point r and the origin is basically o. So, this is at that r, r point and this is at o point. What is lambda? Lambda is basically the wavelength of the light in vacuum. Okay, small r is basically the distance from uh, of this point which is having coordinate x y from the origin. So, it is square root of x square plus y square and f is the focal length that you are designing. So, based on that you can actually see you can alter the focal length, you have to choose that particular element in that particular way. Okay? So, here the placement of those different elements that's, that you have seen that will decide what should be the focal length. So, you have got com complete control on designing this kind of metal lens. Now, let us take one example. So, let us uh, fix that the focal length should be around uh, 10 mm okay? and you are using those 8 resonators in a particular pattern to um, see uh, realize this particular metal lens. Okay? So, here you see the diameter of the lens is designed to be of. So, here each of them are basically one of those uh, metal lens. So, the diameter is taken to be 5.52 mm and it has got a numerical aperture of 0 0.27. Okay? And here you see this is basically the uh, profile. Okay? So, this one is how the phase shift changes. Okay? So, as you go inside the darker colors they look like you know having higher so this sorry this red red colors they look like higher phase 2 pi okay and here the blue one is having very low phase shift so that way it is not pattern in in a particular uh, fashion it is it should have a hyperboloidal kind of uh, pattern so that you are able to focus that uh, light beam so, you have to introduce the phase to the incoming light so that it can band and focus at a particular point. So, this shows the design of a single lens in the matter surface. Okay? It also shows the distribution of the phase and the 8 different resonators and the space for every unit is basically 80 micron by 80 micron. And here the time scale uh, sorry the length scale is 1 mm. Now, this if you take this particular portion and zoom it, you will see this is how you know you have placed your uh, metal lens. So, you see metal lens design will require help of numerical simulation tools to optimize the design so that you can have a focal length of 10 mm or whatever is your requirement. So, it depends on the placement of this elements, you will be able to change the phase shift profile. And this is the schematic of 5 by 5 matter surface uh, lens array which is patterned on a silicon substrate. So, what is the advantage as you can see here? If you think of traditional uh, terahertz lenses, they are basically bulky and they are bulky because they rely on the phase accumulation uh, of the wave while it is traveling through the lens and that gives you the focusing of the wave. 
here it is different here in matter surface your surface is introducing the phase so matter surface lens can be flat thin and flexible so this is why matter surface lens has got a lot of application in the future when you do the analysis of this, let us first look into the simulation results. So, these are the simulation results of the matter surface lens. Okay, it is used as a cylindrical lens. So, these are the simulated electric field distribution uh, for X polarized light incident normally. Okay, so here only the normal components are basically um, only only the wave components uh, with. Uh, polarization orthogonal to the incident beam is shown and the structure was designed for 0 0.8 terahertz so you can see the focusing over here but you can also see that it is working fine for other wavelengths something like 0 0.5 terahertz as well as 0 0.6 terahertz or 0 0.9 terahertz so it actually has a very broadband functioning range okay and the focal length you can uh, actually see that the focal length is uh, decreasing with frequency okay so 0 0.5 has got a smaller or shorter focal length as compared to 0 0.8 whereas 0 0.9 will have a larger one as compared to uh, 0 0.8 terahertz and this is uh, pretty, pretty good because here also from the equation you can see that is happening if you look at the experimental uh, results, so these are the experimental results. So here also you can see the focusing is taking place. So here again we are considering X polarization, normal incident light. So A to H are basically showing you the Y polarized uh, electric field uh, amplitude distribution in ZX. So this entire column is for ZX. Uh, cross section and this entire column is for ZY cross section and this particular column shows you at from the focal plane okay so whatever is so the, if you actually take a cut at this particular point you see this uh, nice focusing happening okay so this actually gives you evidence that the lens you have designed using this kind of uh, C shaped uh, split ring resonators work pretty well and that not only works for the frequency that you have uh, centered it around you can also work on the frequencies adjust into that okay so let us now look into another design based on matter surfaces let's look into a sensor made of matter surface now photonic biosensors have recently got a lot of interest okay and uh, detection using biosensors may come handy due to their multi-purpose applications something like sensing encryption etc okay so you can think of making a, a sensor okay or you can say matter surface refractive index sensor okay that is constructed by placing a graphene pattern sheet so here you can see this particular structure is made up of graphene so you have taken a graphene sheet and patterned it and then you put it on top of a glass material okay so this is how the structure is so if you see this is the three dimensional perspective this is the top view and this is the side view so here you can clearly see uh, you have uh, graphene you have uh, peptides okay which is the surrounding medium okay and then you for for detection that is how it will work as a biosensor whenever there is a change in the refractive index the resonant uh, wavelength will show some shift and you can detect that shift and that will be the detection so this is the structure so here the uh, glass substrate is 10 micron by 10 micron by 1.5 micron this is the thickness and when you pattern the graphene um, in the matter surface so this is the matter surface which has got a unit cell um, dimensions of this one so this length is um, 9 micron lt which is the end of the length of the tail end that is 4 micron and you have width of the tail end that is 0 0.5 micron and the overall thing has got a single layer graphene thickness that is 0 0.34 nanometer now first thing is to uh, now what will be the permittivity of this uh, graphene 
material so you can actually estimate that from the graphene's uh, conductivity so for a single layer graphene sheet the graphene conductivity can be split into um, two parts that also you can do for multi layer it's not only necessary for single layer so it has got two parts like intra band and inter band conductivity so uh, you can write the permittivity in terms of conductivity then so epsilon omega can be written as 1 plus sigma over epsilon naught omega delta okay from that you this sigma s has got two parts uh, this is intra band contribution and this is inter band contribution as you can see here and he, you can observe that you know uh, omega is the angular frequency that you are using and this uh, delta as i told you this is the thickness of the sheet okay graphene sheet so for single layer it is 0 0.34 nanometer you can also put multi layer over here whatever is the thickness that will change the permittivity okay and in this formula t is the room temperature kb is the boltzmann's constant and h cross is basically the reduced planck's constant so using this formula you can find out what is uh, your sigma s from sigma s you can estimate what is the permittivity okay you can also correlate um, the chemical potential of the graphene okay uh, with the capacitance voltage uh, and the fermi velocity okay so this is also uh, a way to find out what is uh, mu c that is the graph graphene's chemical potential and they will be applied into this particular equation of uh, conductivity so with all the parameters known here okay you can uh, obtain the permittivity and that allows you to also find out what is the impedance and uh, refractive index based permittivity and permeability so you can see that the impedance can be calculated from the s11 so you, if you take this kind of unit cell and then uh, periodically extend it in both x and y direction and you put two ports one along um, z plus and one along z minus okay so you can obtain what is the s11 parameter there's the reflection parameter so reflection so port one say light is coming from port one which is on the top of your um, sheet okay so s11 will be the reflectance or reflection coefficient and s21 will be the transmission coefficient okay so from that you can also obtain uh, this uh, parameter it is for i n k naught d can be related to this uh, s parameter and the impedance and that allows you to calculate what is the refractive index okay so refractive index can be correlated with the permittivity using this formula which is epsilon equals n over z and permeability can be written as mu equals n z okay so this is how you can obtain the parameters for this particular graphene based structure and then you look into the performance parameter for this particular sensor so you can understand that uh, there will be a you know um, transmission dip uh, for this particular uh, sensor and when you change the surrounding media refractive index the transmission dip will change okay so in that case you can find out what is the sensitivity of your device when it is working as a sensor how it is sensing you are changing the surrounding medium permittivity accordingly the uh, transmission dip wavelength is basically changing right so you can find out sensitivity equals delta f that is the change in the frequency over the change in the refractive index of the surrounding medium you can also find out the figure of merit of this uh, sensor as s divided by the fwhm of this that is full width half maxima of one of this dip okay fine so this is how you can use meta surface uh, based devices for lens for sensing and all this thing and th they are they are pretty uh, you know sensitive uh, devices that you can make using uh, meta surfaces so now let us look into some example for um, GMR based devices. So GMR if you remember these are basically guided mode resonance based devices and as I mentioned in the previous lectures that uh, GMR gives you excellent filters okay very high quality filters. So let us look into a design of uh, flat top 
bandpass filter for terahertz telecommunication application. So here is a structure that is freestanding and it consists of a gold film which is periodically pierced as you can see these are cuts in the gold film as you can see this is the actual image mm, and this is the schematic and it is basically sitting on a thin film of silicon uh, nitride okay so we are calling it as SINX and uh, the permittivity is 1.97 okay and this is a gold film and here are the parameters for this one so you have the periodicity of this grating that you have created this is basically a 1d grating okay it is um, this is the grating period okay w is basically the width of the slit 215 nanometer tm and td are basically the height or the thickness thickness of the metal layer thickness of the dielectric layer that those are 70 n nanometer and uh, 540 nanometer respectively now there is a way to choose this uh, period of the grating it should be chosen such that the resonant wavelength lambda aha okay um, the first diffracted orders are trapped in the in this uh, silicon nitride film so when you first diffracted order means you are talking about uh, plus one and minus one so you are letting the zeroth order to escape okay so you have to make sure that there is total internal reflection okay and total internal reflection you can think of the condition here this is the range of lambda r okay when it is normally incident so you'll get total internal reflection from this bottom interface and you should get high reflectance from the top interface which is basically the uh, narrow slits in the gold film okay so this is what should happen so you are having uh, incident light falling from this side on the grating okay which has got sub wavelength length metallic grating deposited on uh, freestanding dielectric layer here in this case it is silicon nitride okay and you want the first order diffracted waves to be trapped inside and the zeroth order to come out okay so this is how you will be having a uh, bandpass filter so they too will block okay and this will only pass so let us see how we do this so to do this we need to understand the diffractions from the grating so we should understand the grating equations so here you see a schematic shows only a grating and then this is the incident wave vector and there is this is the transmitted wave vector that is the zero th the fundamental one and the zeroth one shows the reflected fundamental uh, wave vector okay and there are plus one minus one plus two minus two okay plus three minus three. these are not shown okay so only uh, plus minus one is shown for the reflectance and uh, for transmittance plus minus one is shown plus minus two is also shown and beyond that it is not shown okay so what are the equations for the reflection region this is the equation so n ref is the ref refractive index of the ref uh, this particular medium sin theta m okay will be equal to n incident sin theta incident minus m lambda naught over capital lambda x so capital lambda x is basically your grading period m is the order okay so here you can find out all those different uh, angles in which you know the reflection will take place similarly you can also find out for different m equals 0 plus 1 minus 1 what will be the condition that is satisfied and you can obtain what are those angles through which the transmission of zeroth order or plus minus 1 plus minus 2 order will take place now these grating equations they allow us to relate the wavelength of the incident wave and grating to the angle of the diffracted mode so th that is that is very good so this is how the angles are related to these wavelengths and you can also predict the directions and the power of the diffracted modes right the directions means the angles will only tell you the direction so this information you can obtain from this grating equations now coming back to this structure we considered the metal layer to be 70 nanometer and the slits are very narrow which are, are 215 nanometer 
and this ensures a polarization sensitivity. What does it mean? It is designed in a way that the TM polarized waves are basically transmitted through the slits, okay? in which case the electric fields are like this, but you know the T that is uh, proportional or parallel where the electric field is parallel to X will be basically reflected from this metallic membrane, they will not be able to pass through. Okay? And this uh, particular thickness of the dielectric layer and the grating period that is D okay, is selected such that you only get single transmission peak okay? and here the design is meant for 2.97 micrometer and you have chosen normal incidence. So, this is basically the incident angle. So, here you have considered theta to be 0. Okay? So, such filters, uh, this kind of filters can be very useful for atmospheric observation, which has uh, got a uh, transparency range from 2.8 to 5 micron. So, here you can only allow single transmission peak. So, you can uh, use it for this kind of uh, atmospheric observations. And how the design will change? This, this particular method of designing, redesigning a filter easily is called also called frequency scaling. So, how it works? So, say instead of uh, 2.97 um, center wavelength, if you want to double the wavelength, okay, that means you want to scale uh, your design. Okay, in that case, all the physical parameters of the design will also get doubled. Okay, something like you know the periodicity, the width, uh, and the thickness, and all these things will also get uh, doubled. Okay. So, you can um, scale it up. So, that will allow you to get that. Okay. Now, let us first focus on this particular design which was meant for 2.97. So, it is you can see here it is speaking at 2.97. So, this is the transmission uh, spectrum of the TM polarized wave for this particular uh, design. Okay. And the inset shows uh, the magnetic field intensity which is modulus of H y square okay uh, for this particular incident on and gold has been assumed to have a refractive index which is given by this particular equation okay so you can actually obtain the gold permittivity using these equations here two important things are seen so this is basically the gold membrane and this layer is basically your silicon nitride okay and uh, figure B shows uh, the transmission maximum in the left axis and its spectral position. So, where it happens. So, everything is changing when you change D. Okay? So, you can change the periodicity and you can tune um, the resonance position as well as the transmission maximum. So, here you are just keeping um, gold and the silver layer, silver nitrate, silicon nitrate layer thickness constant. Okay? So, that brings me to a case where the scaling actually takes place over this uh, lattice period okay? and the width of the slit. Okay? So, these factors the thickness factors will not play a role. Okay? Now, if you look into the optical transmittance diagram, which is T as a function of sigma and kx, okay, this is how it looks like, it is a parametric plot. Here, sigma is basically 1 over lambda, that is the wave number and kx is the x component of the incident wave vector and kx can be calculated as 2 pi sin theta over lambda. Now, here a couple of important things are there. So, this diagram as you can see is divided into areas corresponding to the existence of propagative diffractive orders in air. So, here you can see only 0th order is coming out, but plus minus 1 modes are excited. Here 0th order is coming out, but only plus 1 is excited. Here 0th order is coming out and no diffracted modes are excited. Here it is two modes are coming out. So, 0 and minus 1 is coming out and uh, plus 1 and minus 1 are also getting excited. So, okay? so from that 
two modes are getting coming out only plus one is getting trapped okay so basically there are different regions and which are separated by this different white lines as you can see so if you see the plus minus one defected orders in free space and uh, uh, silicon nitrate so this is in air okay and this one is in the silicon nitrate okay and zero order transmission spectra have been measured for the incident angle uh, uh, ranging from 0 to 45 degree so this is the case where you have theta equals 45 degree okay and that has been done with uh, 0 0.5 degree increment for tm polarization and those transmission plots are actually here so the bright color shows highest transmission and uh, darkest color shows almost zero transmission okay and there are two transmission bands corresponding the corresponding for two modes so that you can see there are two transmission bands here for the two modes of uh, silicon nitrate layer what are the two modes one is basically the plus one and the minus one okay now as expected high transmission is measured when no diffracted waves are transmitted in air so that is below this particular dotted line above this dotted line there is a diffracted mode is also transmitted so you know the transmission drops so, but here no diffracted modes are there so you get very strong transmission okay however in the silicon nitrate layer that is here okay diffracted orders are required so the zeroth order cannot couple directly to the guided mode of silicon nitrate that you can understand so zeroth order cannot directly get coupled to silicon nitrate and that is why also they are simply coming out because in order to do that you need to have uh, you know wave vector matching or you can say that there is wave vector mismatch between the zeroth order and that is why zeroth order will not get coupled directly as guided mode however for plus minus one diffracted mode in the silicon nitride uh, SINX layer, okay, it can give you those two guided mode resonances, which we are able to see that when there are two guided modes resonances, the transmittance become bright. Okay, so these guided mode resonances are basically um, in the silicon nitride waveguide, and they actually are transmitted by a second coupling with the gold grade so when you measure them okay so you can measure the absolute uh, transmission intensity and you can see it reaches 78 percent at normal incidence and that is basically uh, almost eight fold enhancement um, compared to the geometrical transmission and that is significant so without the guided mode resonance effect you will hardly see any uh, significant transmission here okay you will only see like 10 percent or something like that so you can calculate the fwhm that is 2 to 3 nanometer and when you do it for uh, 10 degree you are seeing two different uh, transmission peaks so you are also getting a second uh, peak at 3.3 micrometer which corresponds to the excitation of uh, second guided mode resonance okay so that is happening so when you go towards this so this is the axis where theta is zero this is where theta goes to um, 40 degree so you are actually able to see more uh, modes coming in and there is also another little peak visible at 4.3 micrometer and but this is corresponding to uh, carbon dioxide absorption during the fabrication so this is a fabrication uh, issue other than that these are the two things that completely matches our prediction so next thing is as i mentioned gmr based devices have very high q they can also be used for sensing application so let us look into gmr based uh, biosensors and um, it is very popular to use gmr effect for sensing especially in biosensing because they have very narrow controllable line width and they make very high efficient filters and there are four main detection schemes for gmr based sensors wavelength detection angular shift detection 
intensity shift detection and phase shift detection. Among this, the top two that is wavelength detection and angular shift detection, they are the most commonly used one as incident light is totally reflected with highly angular and spectral selectivity at resonance. So, you can see the schematic here, the schematic shows, um, so this is where you have the grating, this is your waveguide and this is the substrate. So, this is the GMR resonance device. So, incident light passes through the grating with an incident angle. So, here the incident angle is theta i okay, and the grating equation will be the gamma capital gamma that is the grating period n w g that is the refractive index of the waveguide sin theta d that is the diffracted angle okay, minus n c n c is the cladding uh, refractive index sin theta i that will be equal to m g that is the order of the diffracted wave times lambda. So, what is m g? It can be 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on. So, this particular um, diagram can also be written ok, we will discuss this later. So, it is like you know this can be seen also like this where you know the so this is basically a simplified model of your GMR sensor where the height or the depth of the grating is assumed to be 0. So, here you just show top layer waveguide and substrate layer and you are just showing what is happening ok. So, this is the diffracted wave and then it gets you know totally internally reflected and so on it this is how it propagates inside this waveguide. Now, the grating diffracted wave will couple into the waveguide layer once the diffracted wave is phase matched that we all know that only so there is diffraction but when it is phase matched it will be supported in this waveguide and it can propagate. So, theta d is the propagation angle in the waveguide layer and we, for simplicity, we can think that this dg, the height of the grating or the groove, okay, should be can be uh, extremely thin or small, and they can be ignored. So this allows us to look for the conditions of phase matching. So the guided wave condition of the planar waveguide can be defined from this one. So if this is um, theta d this angle is theta d ok and this wave vector is uh, k naught ok. k naught is basically the incident, uh, k naught is the wave vector in the in air or in vacuum. You multiply this by um, the refractive index of ng layer. So, you get the wave vector in this one ok and then you can take the cos theta component ok. So, you will get uh, this one basically. So, this one minus uh, m phi ok. So, this cos uh, theta d ok will give you the vertical uh, this this particular one ok the component of the wave vector and when you take minus m phi that should be equal to the total phase that is there and the top and the bottom of the two interfaces ok. So, you can write k naught is basically 2 pi by lambda which is the wave number in vacuum. D w g is basically the thickness of the waveguide or that is the height here ok. M is a positive integer it is basically the mode number of the waveguide it can be 0 it can be plus 1 minus 1 plus 2 minus 2 and phi top and phi bottom as you can see these are basically the phase shifts that occur due to total internal uh, Fresnel reflection at the top and the bottom interfaces. So, top interface is basically the waveguide grating interface and the bottom one is basically waveguide substrate interface right. So, for a given waveguide structure you can use this particular equation to calculate what will be theta d ok and then you can use this equation to find out what is the theta i that will give you that theta d ok. So, that way you know the incident angle that will allow you to get this particular modes. And then when the surrounding refractive index n c change, what will happen? Different incident angles can be resolved ok. So, you can actually obtain the angular sensitivity like this. So, you can define angular sensitivity as S a which is delta 
theta i that will be the change in the incident angle whenever there is a change in the surrounding refractive index surrounding medium refractive index. So, here you can um, say that uh, delta theta i is basically the shift in the resonant angle that is introduced by the change in the refractive index of the surrounding media that is the delta n c. So, here you see this the first one it shows the schematic of the grating waveguide guided mode resonance. So, you see there is guided mode resonance for this structure and that helps for angular res resonance and this also shows the reflection spectrum okay, in this case okay, for the refractive index values of 1.333 okay, that is the red one then n c equals 1.353 and n c equals 1.373. Okay. So, you can see they are color coded and what is important here to notice is that with this kind of uh, change minor change in the refractive index the, the incident angle needs to change. Okay. So, that is how it is angular resolved or you can actually use this as a sensor. Right. So, with that we stop here uh, today and this ends our discussion on uh, meta surface and uh, GMR based devices. In the next lecture, we will discuss about uh, another interesting topic that will be on transformation optics and we will see how to make uh, invisibility clocks. Thank you. If you have got any query, you can drop an email to this email address mentioning MOOC on the subject line.